and he knows what you need, so talk to him. Talk to him. <laughs> I'll say something like this. Almighty God, we need you right now. Reveal
Sometimes it's us that creates the actual issues that come upon ourselves. And because we're so used to the happiness and we don't understand what joy is all about. See, joy is about going through something and still not allowing people to know that you're going through it. Joy is when you're broken and you're tore up and you show up to church on Sunday and everybody don't know that your life is falling apart. Joy is when you got to sit here and minister to people and you're on the verge of getting a divorce. Come on. Joy is when you know you're about to lose your job, but you don't act like you're about to lose your job. Come on. That's what joy is. And you got people all about happiness. About happiness and they want to be happy all the time and I want to be happy but if you're happy it's only temporary because your situation is good see happiness don't ex don't don't exist when your situation is bad when things are broken when things are all tore up in your life see happiness don't allow you to go down on knee bone valley come on and pray and preach late at night when you sit there praying your mid midnight hour in the closet when your life is falling apart happiness will only set you to move when things are good for you you got to understand that joy comes in the midnight. Come on. And when things are all tore up in your life, you need joy and not happiness. You need a God, a God that is joyful, a God that says, I am your joy. I am your peace. I am your strength. That's what you need when things are about to fall apart in your life. Yeah. Tired of these happy saints, these happy Christians. All about things being favorable for them. And then they come to the house of the Lord when things are all tore up. God bless you, and guess what? The reason why he probably ain't blessed because he knows he won't see you. Oh, come on here. <laughs> see, every time you get something in your favor, you want to, wait a minute here now. God then gave me favor on my life. Everything is good. But then you're wondering why. Yeah, if you don't see him no more. And you're sitting there and you're falling away. And not realize that you're falling away. Jesus. Because Jesus. this gospel is a working gospel. Mm -hmm. I think I said something. Amen. This gospel is a working gospel. The Bible says that a man that doesn't work doesn't eat. Come on. Meaning that God expects you to work. 
He gives one five talent, and he got five more. He gave another one two talent, and he got two. But he gave one one, and he sat on it. God said, I got a problem with the one who sat on the gift that I've given him. Mm -hmm. God expects you to work in his kingdom. It's not about coming and being pew sitters. It's about going out and being disciples for the world. That's what it's all about. And until we get this in our mind, it's not about if you can't shut down for an hour and 15 minutes, but you can give your employee eight hours a day, then your commitment is all off. We don't come down here every, every day. We barely show up one hour and 20 minutes a week. And so you have to come to the point that if God is truly God in your life, mm -hmm. then prove it. That's all right. I hear your mouth, mm -hmm. but your attendance doesn't prove it. That's it. Come on, that's it. And so that's what it's all about. There are many reasons I could not be here this morning mm -hmm. if I had an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem is that it would be an excuse. Right. It's not what's in my heart. And I've said before, I preach to one like I preach to none. Because every sermon is always preached unto the Lord. Right. And it's not about me, it's about you giving reverence to who he is. And then you want him to fall in line based off of your life and your circumstances. You're requesting things, but you're not drawing near him. I said that we're in a year commitment. And as soon as I said the year commitment, people start getting uncommitted. That, that lets you know that God's word has gone out and what? Will not return for. But it's showing that who is really committed. So it isn't me, God, saying this is a year commitment. Because by the end of 2022, watch this, when your life has transformed and things start happening for you and things fall in place, the people who life falls apart are going to be here while you move on. Because things are happening, going to happen for you in this season. So, so we got to get to the point of understanding to catch the vision, make it plain. It. We, we put it on the tablet so you can catch it, you can run with it. Commitment, commitment. Commitment in my life with God. Commitment in my relationship with God. Commitment in my job. Commitment in everything. Commitment with my family. Commitment in all that. But if you don't seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then God won't handle all that other stuff that you're concerned with. And the word of God is so plain and simple, the simplicity of the gospel. It is not a complex word. It is not something deep. It is not something so unrevealing. It is something that you're going to see in the day's scripture that you just can't understand. Some people are showing exactly who they really are. And the word will reveal it to you today. So, so join me in a word of prayer before we go into this actual word that God has apart for me to give you this morning. Join me in the word of God as we get ready to eat of the bread of life this morning, man. God gave me one scripture I'm going to work with, but I got other scriptures I'm going to dance with. And we're going to have a good old time here today. Amen. Amen. So join me in the word of prayer. Oh, great and mighty God, we're coming right now. God, we thank you, God, for this opportunity. God, we thank you, God, for this platform. God, we just thank you for those who are faithful and few and came here, God, with their hearts open, God, because we know that you can do great things with a remnant, God. You have always done great things with a remnant, God. So it's in the few. Jesus changed the world with 12 and had a multitude, God. So I know that, God, that whatever you have imparted in these people right now in this season is intended to allow this ministry to move, to be able to do your will. For your will be done and that kingdom come. God, and those who intended to show up, God, those who have any type of medical issues, those who have any type of sickness, any ailment, God, I pray right now, God, that we pray for their strength right now during this season. God, and we pray for those in the uptick of this pandemic, God, that we find a resolution, God, that we know that as long as we do our part, you will do your part, God. Heal those, God, mend them, God, and restore them so they can come and serve you, God. We access in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray, amen. amen. The scripture reading will be coming from the book of beginnings and will be coming from the book of Genesis, the 37th chapter, if you have your Bible. Genesis 37, I'll be coming from one verse and I'll be reading the New Living Translation version this morning. Genesis 37 and verse number 5. Are we there? Amen. Any hold-ups? No hold-ups? <clears throat> All right, here we go. Genesis 37 and 5, and the reading of God's word goes as written. One night, 
Joseph had a dream. And when he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. Let me say that one more time. One night, Joseph had a dream. And when he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. I want to take this one verse and with the actual unction and the guidance of the Holy Spirit to speak you from a topic. And it will be stay away from small minded people. Stay away from small minded people. Got to stay away from them. When Jackson State University hired Deion Sanders to be his head coach in September 2020, many people may have thought that. It was like Tim Tebow when he decided to play Major League Baseball. Because most Division I colleges, head football coaches, have usually coached college football before they ever are offered a head coaching position. But Deion Sanders had only coached at a high school level when he was officially offered a job at Jackson State University. Meaning when Jackson State University hired Deion Sanders, they believed that he could bring the school the attention they needed to turn their football program around. And the attention that they would receive would bring the talent that they were looking for. And that talent that they were looking for would bring them the wins that they were hoping for. And Jackson State University went 11 and 1 and won their conference championship for the first time since 2007. And they broke their regular season record by averaging more than 42,000 fans per game. Mark Twain says it this way he says, Keep away from people who try to belittle your ambition. Because small-minded people, church, always, always do that. But the really great people make you feel that you too can become great. Meaning when you are seeking to do something big and bring it into fruition, it is very important that you are careful of the people that you are associated with on a regular basis. Because the most important thing after dreaming big is the people you tell your dream to. That's the most important thing. And telling your dream to the wrong people can only cost you the life of the dream. But it can also cost you the dreamer his own life. Because the moment that you tell your dream, you can expect that there will be people who will try to discourage you, to belittle you, and to steal your idea by becoming your biggest competitor. Tennis legend John McEnroe puts it this way. He says that everybody loves success, but they hate successful people. Lord have mercy. He says everybody loves success, but they hate successful people. And there could be somebody that is meant to be in your life journey, but they're not meant to stay with you until you reach the end of your journey. Because some people don't love you. They don't even care about you. They're just only trying to maintain a connection for what they can benefit from you in this season. Meaning some people will only do the bare minimum. I'm talking to someone. Meaning a little phone call from here and there. And what they're really doing is just maintaining a connection with you. So when they need or want you, they have a way in to be able to get what they need from you. And it is so sad how fast people will forget about you once they have already gotten what they wanted from you. Come on. It is so sad how people don't remember when they're in a bad situation and you came and got them out of that situation. Because there are people who will bring you down by just being who they really are. They ain't gonna change. That's just who they are. And in today's text, in today's text, 
we have a man by the name of Joseph who is a dreamer. And the dream that he has was too much for his brothers or parents to handle. All because it revealed what God's plan was for Joseph and his family future. But it appointed him as the head over their future. Follow me here. And when dealing with small-minded people, here it is. You can never share what is spiritual to that which is natural. You, 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 you can never share what is spiritual to that which is natural. Let me give you a scripture. 1 Corinthians 2 and 14, as my son put it up. But people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's spirit. It all sounds foolish to them, and they can't understand it, for only those who are spiritual can understand what the spirit means. Watch this. Paul was saying that there is no way that a natural mind individual can comprehend or understand all that God has prepared for those who believe and love him. Meaning you got to stop wasting your time looking for happiness in the same place that you lost it. Come on. You got to stop doing it. Because you could be dealing with people who really don't understand what God's purpose is for your life. You're trying to get out of the projects, and they're comfortable living in the projects. Come on. You want to become the employer of a business, and they're satisfied working as an employee for the business. You want to build your own home, and they're satisfied with paying rent and calling it their home. You want to get out of debt, but they're satisfied living from paycheck to paycheck. Come on here. And you have allowed certain people to become your priority when you are just one of their options. That's what it is. And you have to stop holding on to people who keep letting you go. Come on. You got to stop holding on to those folks who have already let you go. And pay more attention to the ones that have been faithful to you. The ones that you don't have to impress to be able to be around. Come on. The one who always have your back regardless of what your situation is. The ones that, that you, you love with no strings attached to it. Come on. Because where and what God has for you may require you to cut certain people off in this season. Meaning your cut off period of, of cutting of certain people off in this season shouldn't be limited by association. Okay, I think I said something here. You, you, you cutting folks off in this season shouldn't be limited by association. Here it is. Meaning if your family act up, then you got to cut them off. Come on. If your children start acting up, that means you got to cut them off. Because anything that is causing you too much stress in this season needs to be eliminated so that you can have a cleaner inner circle. You can't let your cut off be limited by association. And some of the people that give you the most trouble got your last name. Some of the people who give you more hell carries your last name. And you're wondering why you're sitting here struggling, trying to make ends meet, when your own family is the one who's trying to give you all the trouble and the hell that you're dealing with. Because if they don't see it your way, you may have to cut them. Come on. If they don't see what you're trying to build, you may have to cut them and leave them alone. But you got to make sure that you stay committed to what God has shown you in this season. Because I'm telling you, you can't share something spiritual to somebody who's not natural. Who's natural. You can't share it. They don't have the ability to comprehend what God is trying to show you. They don't have the ability to, to even think and, and, and see what God is trying to reveal to you. The natural mind cannot understand things that are spirit because that means that they're not tied into the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that your eye have not seen, your ear have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has for you. Because guess what? The key thing is that it is only revealed through his spirit. Good God Almighty. 
not based off of somebody in their knowledge, not based off of somebody based off of their ethnicity, not based off of somebody whether they are a man or a woman, not based off of whether you have a PhD or a PED. It doesn't matter. The bottom line is that if you don't have the Holy Ghost in you, there's some things you are not going to see what God is going to show you that is for you in this season. And that's what Joseph was dealing with with his brothers. He was dealing with some natural-minded individual, but he had a spiritual revelation. God Almighty. He was dealing with natural. Let me help somebody here. Don't take what God has revealed to you to somebody who ain't got the Holy, the Holy Spirit to be able to help you reveal what God has told you. Because so many people go to people because, because of their title. <laughs> but not because of what they are really exhibiting. See, you have to see the God in a person. The, Jesus says that you will know my disciples because of what? Because of what? The fruit that they bear. Come on, somebody. And you've been going to fruitless trees and trying to get a result when ain't nothing been growing there. You got to stop dealing with people who ain't got no proof of where you're trying to go. Why are you dealing with these jokers that ain't got nothing in their life? God's trying to help you. And you keep going to the same person. And they keep telling you the same thing. They're small-minded. They can't comprehend what God is trying to show you this season. If you keep going to the... I'm telling you, the reason why some of you are right where you are right now is that you've been going to the wrong folks who have no idea where you're trying to go. No idea. You've been sharing something spiritual with someone who is natural. I don't care if that's your cousin. I don't care if that's your mom. If they ain't connected to the blood, I'm telling you somebody, if they ain't connected to the word of God, you can't tell me anything. There are times when me and my mother get in deep discussion, and I can tell when the flesh stands up in her. <laughs> because, because it says test the spirit by the spirit. <laughs> you got it. And sometimes you can be talking to folk, and you can know when Jesus ain't nowhere around. That's right. You can know when the Holy Spirit ain't even speaking. Just because that's your mama don't mean that everything come out of their mouth is real. Come on. Because the devil can get into anybody if they give them a way to be able to get into them. See, I'm supposed to honor my mama, but I ain't supposed to be a fool because of my Come on. I'm supposed to honor her, and I ain't going to stop taking care of her and doing what she's supposed to do. But when the Holy Spirit tells me what I'm supposed to do, then I'm going to stick with God. Because I'm teaching Jesus all the way. And sometimes it's going to cut folks off in your own family. It's going to cut folks off sometimes in your job. It's going to cut folks off who, who you have a real intimate relationship with. But the bottom line is that, guess what? If it ain't spiritual, it ain't helping me in this season. I, I'm tired of having natural conversations in a carnal world when I'm trying to go to a kingdom. That is totally spiritual. Come on. I'm tired of having natural conversations about getting rich when God has everything I need to be able to get rich. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. His word will give you everything you need as long as you stick with what he has told you to do in this season. So let me let me roll on down here with number two here. This is gonna hurt somebody here. I'm almost done, I promise you. Because I don't want nobody bleeding on the carpet today. I'm almost done. Number two. Divine plans are meant to create separation. <laughs> Divine plans are meant to create separation. The text says that when Joseph shared his dream, his brother hated him more than ever. Lord have mercy. Somebody missed that. It says when he shared the dream, the separation was that they hated him, not more, but more than they hated him before. <laughs> Meaning Joseph was in good company because watch this, Moses, Abraham, and even Jesus had to be separated to fulfill God's plan for their life. Meaning the plan that God has for you, EEI, will create separation in all areas of your life from certain people so that God's plan can be fulfilled. Let me, let me give you scripture here. If you got your Bibles, run to 2 Corinthians 6 and 17. We ain't going to put it on the slide, but 2 Corinthians 6 and 17 if you got your Bible. 
want you to get there so I can go ahead and show you this in the scripture. If you think I'm lying to you, I want you to tell you what God's word has said. 2 Corinthians 6.17. I'm going to read the New Central Version. When they say amen, so I know. Amen. amen. One amen, two amen. 2 Corinthians 6 and 17. What's the first thing that it says? The first word in that text, it says, leave. Leave those people. The, the, the word says, it says, leave those people and be separated. Who said it? The Lord said it. He says, touch nothing that is unclean, and I will what? Then I will accept you. Watch this. Meaning God never said that it was going to be easy as a child of God. But he did promise us that it would be worth it in the end. Lord, have mercy. He, he did say it would be worth it in the end. And it is better to be hated for who you are than to be loved for what you're not. <laughs> Y'all ain't hear me in back. It is better to be hated for who you are than to be loved for what you're not. Some of you are being loved for somebody you ain't in the season. Because you're sitting here trying to please somebody when you should be separated from somebody. Come on. That's what the scripture says. You're trying to sit there and be something. You want to be loved because you're being uh, conforming yourself into the perception of what somebody else wants you to be. And God is saying that, no, no, no. He says, leave those people. He says, he says, and be separated from them and, and touch nothing that is unclean in the process of leaving. Meaning all that stuff, all that baggage, all that stuff you had, it ain't worthwhile packing it up and leaving because you, you probably got it when you were fornicating. You probably got it when you were committing adultery. You probably got it when, when you weren't living right. He says, all that stuff is unclean. And then he says, then I will accept you. You don't need to take around baggage when you're going to something new. You don't need to take around something that reminds you of what you used to be when God is trying to raise you into something totally different. See, somebody can't handle this type of preaching here. So I've been giving y'all some, I've been giving y'all some breaks here. I try to cut up some stuff there. So you gotta understand, you gotta leave those folks. Who are those people in your life right now that you gotta be separated from? You gotta be separated. Touch nothing that they give you that's not been blessed by God. If it ain't covered by the blood, you don't need to be touched with it. That's even their bodies. Come on. That's even riding their car. That's even the money that they give you to pay your life bill, your phone bill. Don't touch nothing. And then he says, when you do all of that, you can come to me and then I'll accept you. That's what he told me to tell you this morning here. It is better to break your own heart now mm -hmm. by leaving mm. rather than having that same person continue to break your heart every day all because you decide to stay with them. That's what's going to happen. Oh, they're going to break your heart later on down the road. You can believe that. It's going to happen. Because here it is. God expects you to grow. Y'all, 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 let me make something wrong here. Uh -huh. God, God expects you right. to grow. Mm -hmm. If you're in the same place right. that you were nine years ago, mm -hmm. that you are right now, wow. it's because you didn't separate. Right. Mm -hmm. You're still attached to something, mm -hmm. and you didn't prune it so that you could grow. Jesus. You're fruitless. Because you didn't prune yourself. Mm -hmm. The Bible says you have to be able to be pruned. To be able to multiply. To be fruitful. On, People wondering why. Because they don't know how to cut certain things off strategically. Mm -hmm. So that they can start to grow. Because you are expected to grow. Mm -hmm. It is nobody's fault that you ain't growing. But you not pruning yourself. And the word of God will allow you to prune yourself so that you can grow in the season. Mm -hmm. let, let, let me prove to you in scripture. Let me go another one. Go and go, have your Bible. This is a Bible study and sermon. Ephesians 4. I'm going to give you the stuff that you can go back and look at for yourself. Ephesians 4, 15 to 16. Ephesians 4, 15 to 16. New Living Translation. 
Ephesians 4, 15, and 16. One more time. Ephesians 4, 15, and 16. Are we there? Amen. He says, instead, we will, we will speak the truth in love. Here it is. Growing in every way more and more like who? Christ. Who is the head of his body, which is what? The church. Verse 16 says, he makes the whole body fit together what? Perfectly. So watch this now. When you're growing, it has to fit perfectly. It can't be forced on you. It has to fit with you. Good God Almighty. Meaning that if that person ain't the right fit for you, you shouldn't be married to them. If the job isn't the right fit for you, you shouldn't take that job. If the individual isn't the right fit for you, you shouldn't be doing certain things with them. As each part does its own special work. Meaning that you can't have nobody that's attached to you that is lazy. Verse 16, it says, and it helps what? The other parts grow. Meaning your responsibility is to also help somebody grow while they're helping you to grow. Oh, Lord have mercy. And if you got somebody in your life that ain't helping you to grow, they, there you go. They need to go. This is God's word. Here it is. Why? So that the whole body is healthy. Lord have mercy. That's why we got folks sick right now. The whole body is healthy and growing and full of what? Love. You can't get the love and you can't get to your health and your strength back because you're attached to people who ain't doing their part. Jesus. That's what's going on. Meaning whoever you have in your life that is not doing their part could be the real reason why you're not capable of becoming who God wants you to become. That's it right there. And letting go does not mean that you stop caring about them. Mm -mm. It only means that you stop trying to force other people to care about you. Stop trying to force folks to love you when they ain't want to love you. Stop trying to stay with folks who, who don't want to even be with you. They just want to be committed to what you got. All they want to do is they see that you're beneficial for now until they can find a replacement for you later. That's what it's about. You got to be careful. Because here it is, this is good here. The carrying capacity of a particular environment is the maximum population that it can support. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna break this down. Then I'm gonna get out of here. Because I, I need y'all to put your turkeys on. <laughs> the carrying capacity of a particular environment is the maximum population that it can support. Let me, let me explain this. If there is a max capacity of, let's say, 1,500 deers, but it grows to 1,600 deers, but the carrying, the carrying capacity is 1,500, the results could be life-changing because some of the deers will die because of malnutrition. Watch this now. While others will be weakened due to being malnutrition, and become an easier prey for predators such as wolves. I'm going so well. While others might even die fighting over the resources, so the population can quickly drop back below the carrying capacity of 1,500. Here it is. You cannot afford to carry any dead weight in this season because it is only going to weaken you and cause you to become so vulnerable that you won't be able to reach your max potential by being able to grow into who God wants you to be. Some of you are over your carrying capacity. The Bible says to cast all your cares on him. So why are you trying to carry somebody that you can't even carry your own self? It isn't your responsibility to carry other folks. It says you are to love them. Not to carry them. Come on. Jesus is the one who's going to carry them. Sometimes we get so emotionally tied to folks in our doing for them that it results into us carrying them. Now they make us a necessity, make us a need when we shouldn't be that. We should only be people who are there periodically to be able to help them in their rough times. 
but we shouldn't be always the actual person they go to all the time when they need a helping hand. Because you're carrying somebody over the max capacity. So here it is. If it's not good for you, God told me, you need to separate from it. If it's making you sick, he says you need to separate from it. If you're losing sleep over it, you need to separate from it. If causing you too much of your time while you're doing it, you need to separate from it. <clears throat> if it keeps requiring you to repeat yourself, then you need to what? Separate from it. Because God could be moving you away from the very thing that is trying to take you out and where you no longer belong in this season. You got to separate from it. You got to get yourself into stuff that is not productive for you in this season. Lastly, I'm going to close out on this. No music, son. Don't worry about it. God's plan will always put you on notice. <coughs> I think I said something right there. God's plan for your life will always put you on notice. You see this in Genesis 37, 28. As I close the door on this message here. Joseph brothers. Pull him. Out of the pit. And sold him. For 20 pieces of silver. And then they took him. Down to Egypt. The Ishmaelites. Took Joseph. Down to Egypt. After Joseph brothers. Except for Reuben. Who wasn't present who went back to the Chesson, which was the pit, to look for Joseph, because he really didn't want anything to happen to his brother. However, him being the oldest brother, he should have been more responsible and not allow this thing to happen to his brother. But then his other brothers, who was Judah, which means praise, so that's what I tell you right there, people who praise in God don't mean they really all about God. Come on. Because folks will set you up. You, just because you jump around in church doing all that stuff, that don't mean nothing. Because as soon as you leave out of church, you see them jokes acting a fool in the street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Judah was the one who acted a fool. Judah was the one who orchestrated Joseph being sold. Mm -hmm. So watch this now. So while all this is taking place, what Joseph brothers failed to understand was by selling their brother, watch this, was really an investment for their future. Y'all, y'all, boy, I'm about to help somebody here today. Michelangelo puts it this way. He says, the greatest tragedy of life is not that we set high aim and miss it, but that we set a low aim and reach it. Okay, let me help you out. Meaning, don't ever give up on your dreams when someone tells you it cannot be done. Because it doesn't mean that you cannot do it. It just simply means that you won't be doing it with them. Mm. That's the key. Maureen Dow puts it this way. She says, the minute you settle for less than what you deserve, you'll get even less than you settle for. Mm. <laughs> you got to stop selling for stuff that you know that is not what you deserve. Many people settle for less. And you know that's not what you deserve. Mm -hmm. So they compromise. Mm -hmm. And they wonder why their life is miserable when they look out and they look out the window and they see somebody's life going good. Because that person didn't settle. Mm -hmm. But you choose to settle. So when God puts your life back together and puts you on notice, you need to make sure that you don't settle. If a person doesn't meet your expectation, then you don't settle. You put them on notice. Come on, I'm trying to help you here, man. When, when somebody can't step up to the plate, you don't settle. You put them on notice. The plan that God has for your life will always put you on notice. Because God expects you to always get the best in what he has for you. He never told you to settle. Every time you settle, you compromise. Every time you compromise, you deal with more problems, more issues, and more circumstances. All because of the fact that you didn't put a person on notice that they weren't carrying their weight. You put a person on notice that they wasn't doing what they were supposed to do. 
you put a person, you didn't put a person on notice saying, you ain't loving me like I'm supposed to be loved. You ain't handling the bills like you're supposed to handle the bills. You ain't listening to me like I'm supposed to be listening to. Amen. And so when you're emotionally broken, mm -hmm. it's because you settled and you didn't put a person on notice. God says you got to stop putting people on notice in your life who ain't carrying their weight. You got to put people on notice who ain't doing what they're supposed to do. Amen. Why are you sitting there late at night trying to figure it out when this other person ain't worrying about trying to figure it out? Jesus. You're settling because you didn't put them on notice. And that's the problem. And God told me that this is one of the most important things here is that the only thing that has been keeping you from what you want in the past was your story that you kept telling yourself. You couldn't explain why your story didn't change. You are the author of your own story. So if your story isn't changing, it's because you ain't writing it and playing it out so that it can change. You can determine who the characters are in your life. You can determine what part a person played in your life. You can determine what a person can do and what not they can't do for you in your life. You have to change your story and put people on notice so that you can receive what God has for you. And if the individuals are small-minded individuals and they can't comprehend what God is taking you in this season, then guess what? That lets you know that you serve, you're dealing with someone who is natural and don't have no spiritual conductivity to who God is in this season. So when one door closes, the story is that God was re redirecting you to another door because he's tired of you sitting there and trying to wait on that door to open. You got to stop. You got to change your story. When certain people walk out of your life, don't worry about it. God will send other people to be a part of your life, and he'll change the story. That's what it's all about. You got to stop hanging around small-minded people. People who keep telling you what you can't do and what you can't accomplish in this season. This is what it's all about. If you're going to commit, you got to be, atta be attached to the one who's always going to cover you in that commitment. God will always cover you, all your debts, all your flaws, all your issues, if you stay committed to him. That's what people are missing. We're in a pandemic. Tell folks the other day, I told them before, I said, you got to do your part. You got to do your part. And I promise you, the payout, the one thing about heaven is this, um, when I read about it, There's no seniority in heaven. Mm. <laughs> Bible says he who's last is first, who's first is last. I can get into heaven, and you can be in there for 15 years, and I still get front of line privileges. Good God. <laughs> That's all that matters. Getting in. Mm -hmm. But we, we're so used to putting people on pedestals. All I am as a pastor is I'm using a gift. That's it. I am not your God. And what people do, they put people on pedestal. And that's where they mess up in ministry. You got to respect. And respect goes both ways. So the man of God is supposed to respect the people of God. And the people of God should respect the man of God. But we all know God. <laughs> we all got a relationship with God. The same God that talks to me, the same God talks to you. But we are a group of believers that come together with one common good. We know that we can only get to the kingdom through the Son, which is Jesus. And you got to stop allowing small-minded folks to come up alongside you and give you all that fable and all that foolishness to try to stop you and make you think that you're not deserving in this season. You are deserving. With your flaws, with your faults, with your issues, with your problems, you are deserving. Right. And the key about you and them is that you know how to repent when you do wrong. Mm -hmm. 
what they do is they just sit there and they retract what they do wrong. They don't repent. They come with excuses. When you embrace who you are in this season, with all your flaws and your issues, that's when you will free yourself. But until you embrace who you are, you're always going to stay in bondage. Give God some praise.